Hey cooks, the holidays are upon us and we're going to be doing some big time cooking. The really nice people at Sanavo sent over two portable cooktops for us to take a look at. We're going to be looking at the induction cooktop and we're going to be looking at the classic hot plate style. And we're going to turn these babies on with a pan and we're going to watch how they heat up. Um, these are fantastic for the upcoming holidays. We're going to have a lot of pots going on the stove. And this is great as a supplement to your regular cooktop. So join me as we take a look at these two portable cooktops from Sanavo. <music> So I just want to take this opportunity to thank Sanavo for sending these over. One of the things I'm thinking for this upcoming holiday season is I might ha have enough space on this cooktop. I have four burners on this cooktop, but I only have one large, I have two regular, and I have one that's sort of a low power simmer burner. So that really only gives me three real burners to use. And I don't know about you, but when I'm cooking a holiday dinner, I've got a big pot of potatoes going. I have stock going. I'm cooking all kinds of things, vegetables for the stuffing. We're cooking cranberry sauce. We're cooking all that kind of stuff. And I always run out of space on my cooktop. So what's great about having a portable cooktop alongside or two is it expands your ability when you're doing these big cooks, when you're cooking for family and friends, when you're cooking for a summer picnic, they're great. You can even take these bad boys out on your deck, just get an extension cord and you can cook out of your deck and it's really fun because a lot of people, if you live in an apartment, some people can't have like a, a barbecue or a gas burner outside. So these a lot of times are allowed because you don't have a live gas flame. So I just want to take this opportunity to thank them. There'll be a link down in the description. We're going to take a look at these. We're going to play around with, the, with them a little bit. And then I have kind of a big cook. We've got 10 pounds of potatoes back over there. We're going to peel those bad boys. And we're going to do a little experiment in a stand mixer, so stay tuned for that. Today, we're going to get these open, and uh, we're going to do a little heat test. You ask, what is the difference between an induction burner and a traditional hot plate? Well, they have two different methods of cooking. Induction is coming on the scene, and it's getting really popular. People are getting full-on induction cooktops that could run in the thousands of dollars for one of those. But you can get a portable induction burner and play around with induction and use induction on a lot less expensive price. So this one is our induction burner and this one is our hot plate. So the induction system runs on a, a magnet. So you need cookware that's magnetic. This is a classic radiant style heat. So the cooker heats up the burner and the burner has impact on the piece of cookware and it heats that way. So you ask, why would you choose one over the other? Well, the induction tends to heat up faster because there's no burner in between the cookware and the heats and where the heat's coming from. So the magnet magnetizes on the piece of cookware and the heat goes into the cookware. This one, it has to transfer from the burner, it has to heat up the burner, and then it has to heat up the pan. So a lot of people like induction just because it is faster. It heats up faster, and when you turn it off, the heat is gone, similar to gas. And so you can control the um, on and off better than you can with a traditional radiant heat because the radiant heat has to heat up the plate, 
heat up the pan, and then when you turn it off, the heat has to come back down off of that. Um, and that isn't the case with induction. But there's also a lot of benefits for a traditional hot plate. So let's get first open the induction. And we'll talk about the induction. So the induction, this has 1800 watts of power and the hot plate has 1500 watts of power. Um, the induction tends to have more power levels. So the induction has 15 different power levels and the hot plate has five different power levels. So let's get this open and we'll take a look at these. Whoops, I need a knife. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, this is a beautiful glass-like finish on there. Very similar to the glass cooktop. Sweet. Nice. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Look at that. So one great thing about the induction cooktop is look at how nice and smooth this is. It's so easy to clean. It's like glass, right? Um, it comes with a little packet of goodies here. Um, it has a nice smooth cleaning cloth. It has a user manual. And it comes with information. This is on your warranty. And this is a magnet. So when you're in, if you want to find out if your cookware is magnetic, or if you're in the store and you're gonna buy some new cookware, you just take this magnet with you, slap it on the cookware, and if it sticks, then it's induction ready. So here we have the hot plate. And one of the things that I can tell you is the hot plate is a really, really nice price. So the hot plate is $37.99 and the, um, woo, <laughs> the, uh, the induction is $69.99. So if you're looking for a really budget friendly option to expand your uh, cooktop, the um, hot plate is a way to go, right? And this one is a really attractive looking hot plate, let me tell you. So it too comes with a cleaning, a soft cleaning uh, towel. And it has the owner's manual and how to contact the company for support. So, I mean, this is pretty groovy looking too. Um, wow. So, I know you're asking, why would you choose a traditional radiant style burner over an induction burner? Well, first you're talking about cost, right? You're talking $69 versus $37. And this is a really budget friendly option. Um, it's just a matter of preference. Some people don't wanna, don't have induction ready cookware and they don't wanna go out and buy new cookware. So a way to get yourself another burner is to buy a radiant style burner because this is gonna work with all types of cookware. You don't have to worry about if it's induction ready. This one, you can only use induction ready um, cookware. So some of it comes down to price. Some of it just comes down to styling. This you have the glass panel. This you have the traditional burner. So everything is just a balancing act. When we use them, you will find that an induction burner is a little more noisy than a traditional burner. This burner is going to be relatively quiet. An induction ver burner has a fan running all the time. So it tends to be a lot noisier than your traditional burner. Some people, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, your kitchen is loud anyway because you're banging around pots and cooking, 
But some people, you know, they just like the quietness of a traditional radiant style burner instead of the fan running all the time in an induction burner. So like I said, the way this works is an induction burner, you just put your magnetic pan on here and the pan will get hot. The burner all around here won't get hot because there's nothing in here that's radiating heat. The magnet uh, conducts the heat into the pan, whereas this specifically will get hot. And also, um, this you control the temperature a lot easier because when you cut it off, that heat goes away. This has to heat up and down like a traditional burner. So which one do you get? It really depends on preference. It's style, it's your type of cookware, um, and it's just the functionality. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get two pans, we're gonna put them both on here, and we're gonna use our little zapper thermometer, and we are gonna check out how both of these work. Okay, so simultaneously, I'll turn them on. So you hear the fan on the induction burner versus this one is totally silent. So already we're at 149 on this one. This one we're at 75. <laughs> See how fast that induction? 186. 78. This heats very, very fast. I mean, this was, this was instantaneous. So this side of the pan, 182. This side of the pan, 181. 90, 91. So this is just a standard, uh, these are standard nonstick cookware. If you take this off, you're going to hear a beep on here because it doesn't hear, feel that there's a pan on there. And this is just going to shut off by itself. And look at that. It's just barely warm to the touch. It's a little warm right here, but my hand is going across this burner and this pan was just on there at screaming heat, right? So if I put this back on here, it's happy again. Yeah, so that one's hot at 170. Woo! And I can tell you that burner's hot. Um, I put this back on here. We're at 305, 315, 333, 153, 167, 260, 440 degrees. So I'll take the pan off. So this was in the high 300s. It's a little warm, but look at that. I have my hand on there. <laughs> That's injection. I'll turn that off. So cooks, this is the difference between an induction burner and a plain hot plate. We have different kind of styling. We have different price ranges. And we have two burners that two different things. Now you say, you automatically say, I want an induction burner, right? But you have to remember that an induction runs on a magnet. So there could be a very low level radiation in this cooking experience, similar to a microwave. So some people that might be pregnant or have some kind of health issues 
might want to stay away from an induction. They are rated very low, like a microwave, so that's, you know, a judgment call. But we can see that an induction burner gets hot instantly, it cools off instantly. Um, once that heat comes off of there, I'm already at 190. Um, and this was over 400 degrees. So, um, you know, which one is better for you for this holiday season? It really depends on your preference. If you're going out to buy new cookware and you don't have induction ready cookware and you want to make a move up into an induction uh, cooktop, this is a fantastic option. Um, it is beautiful. It is stylish. It heats up fast. It cools down fast. You saw how fast it was. As soon as I put that pan on there, boom, right? It was straight up to the heat. If you don't have induction ready cookware, or you have issues with the fact that it gives off a small amount of radiation, or you just like the look of a traditional burner, which this thing is really cute looking. I like it. And it's a really great price. So um, this might be an inexpensive option given the fact that you don't use it all the time. If you just want to drag it out for a holiday or maybe you want to get a couple of these to use on your deck and you're not going to use it on a regular basis, you know, it's an inexpensive option that does expand your uh, ability to cook for those big kind of events. Um, and even everyday events. Some people live in a college dorm and either one of these would be fantastic for that. Um, also for your RV. Let's do a little egg cooking. <laughs> so I'm gonna put, turn on the uh, burner here. I'm gonna turn on the induction burner. I kind of want low heat. I'm cooking eggs, so I want low heat. Um, I have a little avocado oil. So I'm going to put a little bit of avocado oil in each pan. These are nonstick pans, but I still want to put a little bit of oil in here. And I also have a little bit of butter for flavor. Um, the oil will increase the smoke point of the butter. So that's a good thing. Two eleven ninety seven. <laughs> the induction is definitely faster. See, but the only problem is when you lift this the uh the burner just keeps going when you lift here it detects that there's no pan on there and it goes a little crazy so you have to keep that in mind and over here we're ready for an egg my pan is not exactly level the burner's obviously level but my pan isn't um, And we got an egg in here. Is that a little sizzling we got, Bobo? Yeah, we're going to have a cooked egg over here in like two seconds. How's the uh, Challenger? Challenger still heating up. On this egg here, I'm going to put a little bit of salt. The cracked black pepper. And I'm gonna do this egg over over medium. Whoop! <laughs> Separated a little. It's not the most attractive looking egg, but it is a done egg. <laughs> that is not very good egg form. <laughs> But it's done. Whoops. I like the, uh, the yolk a little uh, runny, and that's what I got here. Runny yolk. <laughs> Can give us a little salt. One thing is I'm getting a nice gentle cook on this. So 
the egg might end up looking better. So one of the things I can say is this took longer to heat up, but it heated up in a more gentle fashion. So it was really great on an egg because it allowed it to slowly heat up. That's what eggs need. They need nice, gentle heat. And um, I'm getting really a perfect um, over medium egg. Over medium is where the white is cooked, but the yolk is runny. Over easy would be the white is kind of runny and the yolk is runny and over hard would be both are set up and cooked. Sometimes you can tell on over medium because you just go like this and you can see how runny the yolk is and just cook it to your desired um, firmness. <laughs> Look what I did to that egg. <laughs> I sort of killed it. So we made two eggs on two different burners, one induction and one a radiant um, burner that is your traditional hot plate. Um, which one do you get? It really all depends on a lot of factors like we talked about. Price, styling. Um, this one you can control the heat a little bit more because on and off, right? Here, it takes a while for that heat to come up, but on eggs, you get a gentler increase in temperature than you do on this. So we're gonna be putting these two burners head to head. We are gonna be doing 10 pounds of mashed potatoes. We got Thanksgiving coming up, and I wanna see if we can make mashed potatoes in the Bosch mixer. So we have the Cinevo uh, burners. I'll put links down in the description. I think they're both great. Um, whichever one you decide, I believe you'll be happy with it. So thank you once again. Links will be in the description. I really appreciate it. And I had a lot of fun testing this out. Stay tuned next. We're going to be boiling two big pots of potatoes on these bad boys. If you like this video, please subscribe below. Give me a comment and a like and visit my website at amylearnstocook.com. I'm also on social media at facebook.com slash groups slash Amy Learns to Cook. On Pinterest and Twitter, I'm at Amy Learns to Cook. And on Instagram, I'm at Cooking with Amy. I love these.